Welcome back, everybody. This is the game Unconditional Surrender, the me, myself, and I playthrough of the main event. The game is published by GMT Games, designed by Salvatore Vasta. We are about ready to embark on February 1942. Uh, the end of the Russian winter is in sight. Uh, get up the player aid card and the weather track. Um, it still is going to be poor for the Russians and severe for the Germans in the cold zone. So um, we roll for the mild zone, a five uh, on December, February, it stays severe. And then we roll for uh, the warm zone, a three, and that's right here, it stays as poor. So weather didn't change. Oh, get off this. Um, no declaration of war by the Axis. There is a declaration of war by the West. Oh, look, we're actually going to do something. They officially are declaring war on Syria. Now, if you look in the rules about the Vichy, um, the Vichy colonies, they're each considered their own country. Uh, French North Africa here, um, Vichy there, which also includes Corsica and Syria. They're each their own country. When they get declared war on, you roll a die. And on a 1, 2, or 3, they will fight you. On a 4, 5, or 6, it will surrender. And for each one of these, um, basically you're, it's considered conquered. For each one of these colonies that's conquered, the next one you declare war on, you add 1 to that die roll. So the only reason why I'm doing this is so that if I declare war on Vichy or North, French North Africa, it's even more likely that they'll surrender as I go. So that's why I'm doing this. Um, there's really no other strategic advantage here because the British are not hurting for supply line. They're not being pushed back to the Nile or anything like that. So this is the die roll. Having declared war on uh, Syria, the Vichy Syria, I roll a die. And I rolled a three, which means they will fight. So for the short period of time that they will exist, they have one, uh, let's see, what's their willpower is two. So they go there. Uh, they have all of a production point. Yay for the French. They have a production point. Boy, it doesn't want to doesn't want to stack, does it? And then they have a garrison unit to place. Um, the only place they can place it is in Damascus. If they place it anywhere else, it's just um, going to be a move for the British to take a city, and it'll they'll be conquered. Um, so in Damascus, at least I make them the British roll the dice, maybe once, maybe twice. We'll see. That ends the Western declaration of war phase. Soviets do not have anything to declare war on yet. Economy phase, I have already done the economy. Quick note, the Germans lost two factories last turn, so 15 minus 3 is 12, times 2 is only giving them 24. Um, <clears throat> with them only having 24 production points, they really need to keep those so they can try and build that airplane that I keep forgetting to build, and still be able to do things uh, both in the East, the Middle East, and uh, recover all their airplanes and all that kind of stuff. So the Germans didn't give anything up to anybody this turn. I'm hoping to get back some of their stuff in strategic warfare. But I don't know that I will, so I'm going to keep my production points. And that's economy for everybody. We are to strategic warfare. The Russians are plus two. The Germans are plus one. I always roll the Russians first. Um, it's in the rules. Now, if you look at the cards, I don't think... The Germans don't have any subs... Uh, the Russians don't have any partisans, and actually the West doesn't have anything either, so. Um, the Germans are plus one, the Russians are plus two. We roll the dice. Germans get a three plus one is a four. The Russians get a four plus two is a six. Yes, a six to a four, guess what? Four to a six, the Germans lose another factory. The partisans are telling. Partisans are telling on the Germans. They're up to four factory loss marker. 
things are going badly for the Axis. Um, they are plus three to plus two against the West. There are no markers to play. The Germans roll. Five plus three is an eight. And the British roll. A one plus two is a three. Um, an eight to a three means the Germans get back the factory they just lost. And the British uh, factory loss marker goes up one. So the British are back up to six. And the Germans are back down to three. So they'll have 24 again next turn. Um, that takes care of that. Strategic movement for the Axis. Did I do any last turn? Still on the thing. Um, I don't have one because I didn't set it up right. I didn't supply the guy in Norway. Otherwise, I could have possibly uh, railed one of these airplanes back, gotten to Veloluki with three sorties on the German airplane, and then it would have been... Um, I would have been able to take out more sorties on the Russians. Uh, as it is, I'm in a world of hurt here. Uh, so, no strategic move for the Axis. The West, um, biggest thing they have to do is make sure that they take the marker off. God damn it. Why it does that? Okay. And I don't think they have anything right now. So, that'll be them. The Russians, oh, they have it out there someplace. What do they do with it? Is it this up here? Somewhere? Oh, there it is. Um, I really don't have one for the Russians that I can see. If I find one before I start their turn, then I will do it, but I just don't see one that makes a difference. So I'm not going to sit here and struggle with whether I really need to do a strategic move at this point. Uh, the line's pretty safe right now, it looks like. So, with the end of that, we go into Axis Operations phase. Um, well, we're going to activate the 10th and the 15th. They're going to declare Oh, geez, it's a shock army, so he's plus one. And he's probably going to add a tank. And I don't have any choices here. And I'm going to also activate the Romanian. They're going to step into the line and try and do... Or are they? Hang on a second. They're not going to step into the line. Get back there. Actually, I'm going to activate the third Panzer first. It's going to go one, two and then declare an assault here and then the Romanians move into the line here just to try and give me some continuity um, he does have a 3 hex attack here that I can't do much about um, well I can call an assault here against the shock army trying to move shock armies is a pain in the butt so anyway that's one, two, three, four from the Romanians lose, moved one. Um, the Germans spent one, two, three, four, so they're down to 20. I'm not sure there's much else I'm going to be doing in the east. I pretty much have it as good as I can get it at this point. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm going to do this a little different. I'm going to hit five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this guy here is going to hit him for one. And again, because of the poor and the severe, if you do the math, 
it's an automatic exchange. We both end up with like ones and twos. We can't roll well because of the um, air can, um, minus two for poor makes him only be able to get ones. I'm halved at minus two in the severe. So the best I can get is like a four divided by two is a two. So the math says it's just going to be a straight exchange. I just have to decide where I want to do them. Um, Yes, I'm going to do this guy for one, this guy for one from here, uh, just outside of Dupnostrik. And then this guy will make this guy go up another one, and he'll take one off of that one for his two. Airplane Management 104. And he will take off this one up to six, and this one down by one, uh, up another one. And what that does, um, strategy-wise, why am I doing it that way? I am leaving him the planes on the flanks. He has one shot each on the flanks, but if he wants to try to do something in the center, he can't fly a sortie to get close enough because he would be at six. So I basically I negated his center because that's where he seems to be pushing with these shock armies. And where I'm going to try and do my minor little counterattack here. Um, you'll see why I'm doing what I'm doing when I do it. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and um, do this. The German 15th will be the primary. So I start off at plus two because I'm German. I have plus one for a buddy on either side, so that puts me at plus four. Um, the shock army starts off at plus one because it has that little star which makes him an elite. Um, I also have on my faction card, things I very seldom get to use these days, a ground support marker, which I will throw in um, because I have a Romanian I can... Oh, I don't have a Romanian in there. Oh, crap. Well, that was stupid of me. I don't have a Romanian in there. What am I thinking? I don't have a Romanian in that fight. Stop that. Okay, never mind. Not there. Um, so, I'm plus four. He's plus one. He can't add an airplane. He can add a tank. In this case, I'm going to add the tank because this is sort of my bulge, and I don't want him to be retreated, because then if he does, even if it's a plus one, you know, uh, like a plus two here against the first shock army to the northeast, I would not have any tr retreat route, and so he could possibly make me lose a step instead of retreating, which would just be annoying because I'd have to spend some production points on it. And I'd rather spend my production points trying to move armies up and maybe possibly even making some assaults. So I am going to throw in a tank marker from the... from the. Uh, oh, the Germans could too, couldn't they? Oh no, they can't. They're in severe. They can't throw in any of that. Um, they can only throw in ground supports. So the Russians can throw in a tank indiscriminately. So they will. We'll put that down here. Um, the second shock army is the thing that's being attacked. So they're at plus two now. So it's a plus four to a plus two, but the Germans are halved. So six plus four is ten, halved is a five. Can't get any better than that with the Germans in this kind of weather. So I'm at a five, and the Russians roll three plus two is a five, so they stay right where they're at. Nothing happens. A whole lot of production points expended for no gain. Um... The uh, Russian tanks go back on the turn marker here. They come in in March. Um, uh, let's see, I'd be 1, 2, 3, plus 1 is 4 to 1. Yeah, we'll activate the second as well. Um, where am I? I need my faction card. This is where I can throw in the ground support marker. And we're attacking the first shock army. Um, he starts off at plus one. 
I start off at plus two for the German, he's the primary, uh, the second. The Romanian adds extra one, and then the Romanian can use ground support, so he adds an extra one. So I'm back to that four, plus four to one. Um, I've got my three hex attack next to Kursk. If he takes this hex, I'll have a three hex, I'll have a two hex attack back on it. Um, I think I'll save the tanks for possible attacks and just take my chances here at four, plus four have to one. So let's see what the Germans roll. Three plus four is a seven, have is three and a half round up, that's a four. So the Germans have a four, and the Russians rolled a one plus nothing, or plus one because they're, um, yeah, what is it? elite, thank you. I'll, I'll remember the word, I must I will. So they're elite, so they get a two. Um, a four to a two, if you look, is a retreat. So I did push him back. Um, I'm going to take the take it with the Romanian. Stick the Romanian's nose out there. Invite the Rush. Try to convince the Russians they want to attack the Romanian instead of the German. Um, don't know if they will. They know that I have a ground support marker that I could throw in there to defense. So um, they'd be like a plus three or plus four. Could throw in a tank for plus five, minus one, so they'd be plus four to a one. They might do something. I don't think they can get a, an eliminated on him. Excuse me, I took a drink to clear my throat there. Um, mm -hmm. I really don't. Oh, I had to spend another. I didn't take that off. The, the German should have spent one there. That's 19. I've actually activated uh, one, two, three, four, five points. And one for the Romanians. And I really don't see anything else that I'm going to do with the Germans at this point. I'm going to save my production points. I got a feeling I'm, you know, he, he managed to do a. Um, what is it? Uh, he flipped a unit last turn. So I'm kind of worried that he's going to flip another one. I want to be able to rebuild it right away. So I'm going to save my production points at this point. Um, I thought about doing something down here in the Middle East. Um, you know, I could I could spend two and run up here and, att and attack. I could throw my tanks marker in. I'd be plus four to plus one, you think. But he's got two tanks markers, so he could throw a tanks marker in here for defense. That would make him plus three. Okay, you've got a slight edge, and then he has airplanes. I'd be plus four to plus five. It just it's not economically feasible, really, for me to do anything unless I get a German airplane down here to offset his uh, British air. The Italians just aren't quite good enough, and I need them to fight the Malta convoy routes. So I think we're kind of in a stalemate till the British start pushing, and then for me it's going to be just how long can I delay them. Um, my goal here now in Germany is to delay the British through 1942, uh, so that it's like the end of 42 that they take out Libya and probably French North Africa and set up for the invasion of Sicily and, and Italy. Sometime in the summer of 43, I expect Italy to fall. That's my goal. If I can make them last that long, uh, the Russian front probably will be way closer to Germany by the end of 1943, and if I'm defending northern Italy at the end of 1943, um, I feel like I'm doing pretty good at that point as the Germans, because it gets real nasty when they try to, when people try to come across the Alps. Uh, <laughs> it's like minus two to attack and cost, uh, what is it, four? One for the unit, one for the ridge line, and two for this hex, so cost four movement points to move and it's like minus two to attack and yeah, attacking here is just no fun. The Germans can hold this line for quite some time. Now if they declare war on Yugoslavia, you know, and try to sweep in through Hungary, then that's a different thing because we've got the the gap here by Vienna that they might be able to get through because it's only rivers there. But <clears throat> if they're that far in 1943, the Germans are in a, a world of hurt. So, that, in a nutshell, is the Axis operations phase. Um, they have to go do their supply, 
Everything in Russia is in supply. Um, they are going to go over here to this convoy thingy, and they're going to supply this airplane so I can do that um, strategic redeployment, fly an airplane over kind of thing. So let's get that out of there and raise this one sortie up by one. And let's see, what else can we do? All right, I think we got to go down here and do the med. Um, Oh, I forgot. I have Italians to move. It's so worried about the Germans. I'm not paying attention to the Italians. Um, the Italians won't be able to do everything they really would like to do. So they're going to go ahead and spend one. They're going to move this guy. And he's just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He gets close to Benghazi. Um, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. He's just going to actually go there instead. So he's adjacent to Benghazi, uh, but behind a ridge, so that if he does land there, I still am isolating him, but I don't have to move him at that point. So that's why I did that. So clear that up. Now we'll do the supply. Um, well, one supply definitely. We supply the Africa Army. Okay, that's unopposed at the moment. Uh, chased off the Force H again. Um, it shouldn't really go there in poor weather. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have waited until like June when I knew I had clear weather or something like that. No, I'm going to have three turns of clear weather. That's when you want to base Force H there because they can hold their own against aircraft and fleets and actually kind of screw up a full turn's worth of supply. Same thing with Alexandria. Um, the uh, Italians, I'm going to try something here, and we'll see if this pays off, because I have 11 points left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually say that he's officially out of supply, and he's officially out of supply. So they each get a marker. So that they're minus two in combat. Um, reason for all that is it means that I can for three I will clear convoy one I'll bring convoy two down to two sorties um, I can do the airplane for three more that would be nine um, it would leave me two or I could drop this fleet down to two so I'd have two 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 and cleared and then I can concentrate on the aircraft next turn. So that's the idea here. Is I'm going to get the convoys down far enough that I can supply everybody if I need to um, in a pinch when the British start pushing. So that's my supply phase. That's the end of the Axis operations, beginning the Western operations. Um, as been my habit here, I'm going to pause the video. Um, most likely it's going to be gone on long enough that we will uh, swap over to uh, the West and the Soviet response to this um, and the end of turn things. So let me take a quick break here and I'll be back with either an epilogue or maybe I'll go ahead and do the West. Um, just depends on how long I've been recording. Hang on just a minute. Hi everybody, I'm back. Um, I'm at like 23 minutes so I think I'm going to go ahead and try and do the Western operations because it's fairly straightforward and I think I can get it done pretty quick and then I'll break the video and then come back for the Soviets in the end turn in a in a separate video because I have some things I have to think about with the Soviets on what I want to try to do here my last turn of winter um, so they spend two to activate the Western Desert for um, no they don't first they make the first RAF move to Jerusalem and it takes a sortie then they activate the Western Desert Force for two go there go one two and then three four for the city and five four um, Damascus so they have five movement points left um, it's a mobile attack they start off as plus one for the British 
the Syrians start off at minus two. Um, notice that Vichy is not French, so they don't get like plus one for French. They are Vichy, so they don't get that plus one for being the French army. Um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. The Germans could throw in their marker here, but it's pointless because he's got at least another attack. Um, probably not going to make a difference. Um, the British are plus one and then minus one. They're going to throw in an airplane, obviously. That's why it moved here. So that makes them plus two. And then um, they have tank markers to spare. So they'll throw a tanks marker at it as well. And that is... Um, no, I don't think I rolled the German marker. I'll have to check on that real quick um, in just a minute. Um, we'll get this combat in first. So the tanks give me an extra plus two. So I'm plus four to minus two. Plus four to minus two, plus four to minus one. I don't think it's worth the German ground support, which they may need for the Romanians to keep them alive in Russia. So um, no, we're not going to do that. Um, actually, it would matter on what I rolled on this ground support. So this is going to be the German roll for the ground support to put it back um, on the turn track here. I should do this first so, I, so everybody knows what's coming. And of course, I just covered up the die roll. It's a four, so we'll be back in four turns. One, two, three, four. It comes back in June. So now we know when it's coming back. That can make a difference sometimes in these combats, whether to spend the second shit or not. Definitely not going to spend it now. So the British roll a two plus four is a six. Best the French, the Vichy French can roll is a four because they're minus two. So out of form, here you go. Uh, they rolled a five minus two is a three, a four to a th or a six to a three, is a dr. So he is retreated. Western Desert Force takes the hex. They lose four willpower. Therefore, they are done. So all that work I had to do to put them out here on the track, and they just go away. Um, technically, I think I am supposed to, um, I did conquer a country, I don't think we're ever going to see this, but I have to add a, a, a pro-British to the cup. I conquered a country, oh dear. But I don't see the Russians collapsing unless I've missed something terribly. Um, so, anyway, the British got here with five. They could go six, seven, eight, nine, ten to Aleppo. Or they could go uh, one, two, three, four, five, and head back to the west. I think I want to try and say, well, I'm going to move this guy anyway to take Beirut. So if I went one, two, three, four, five, I'd be in Hefia. Here to be in Jerusalem. I don't think it really matters either way. Um, I'll go this way. One, two, three, four, five. And end my turn there. Then I will activate the tenth, which will put me down to fifteen. And he will go one, two, and place a control marker. And then three, four, five, six, seven. Come on now. Eight. He's leaving Aleppo. So, we've conquered Syria, we've captured all the important bits, the cities. Um, I mean, we could go try and conquer Iraq, but I, like I said, I don't really see a need to because uh, the Germans aren't able to really threaten my supply lines at this point. Um, I think the chance to do that in the desert is past. That is the British actual... Oh, no, and then they have one more operations thing. They pick up the airplane and go one, two, three, four, five, six, and put it back there and give it a... Sorry, that way it's back there to help defend the BEF and keep the Germans from even thinking about coming over because they'd be attacking it, you know, plus four to plus five once, and then it would be plus two to plus five the second time, and so on. So it, it's, yeah, it's not worth it for the Germans. 
Uh, the West has to do their supply here. They have uh, one, let's clear all this stuff out. They have one, two, three, four, and this guy will still drop from Cairo. So the uh, Americans will take two, and Suez will take two, and then we will say that we are done unless there's something to move for the Americans. Uh, let's go check the Americans. They don't have anything sitting up here, do they? Nope, they don't have anything in the box. They've got their fleet helping guard uh, the English Channel for right now until those British get themselves down to zero sorties, but it seems to be taking a while. Seems to, I have to do things in the Middle East all the time. So I've done my supply and everything else. That's the end of the... Western operations phase. Um, I think that's about a half an hour or so, so I'm going to end the video here. Um, so we will begin in February 40, 1942, the Soviet phase, in the next video. So this is Dren 608. This is the me, myself, and I playthrough of the main event of the game Unconditional Surrender. Thank you for watching my videos. Please leave comments what you like, what you don't like. And if you like what you see, please subscribe so you don't miss any further episodes. Thank you. Bye-bye.